Uh, I remember that one time you forgot to press the button. <laughs> Yo, shit's happened on this pod so many times. Man. You're so <laughs> for I was fucking pissed. <laughs> <You're> like, <"Whoa." laughs> All right, guys, welcome to episode 177 of Dope Talk TV. Is yours truly low key? Got John here with me, and we're back with another one. We appreciate everybody that's rocking, liking, sharing, subscribing, going over to Patreon, checking us out over there, getting some merch. You know what I'm saying? All that good shit. We appreciate every single one of you, and uh, we're back. We're glad you're here with us. How we feeling, Johnny? How we feeling? How we feeling? Feeling good. Feeling good. It's 4th of motherfucking July. Hey, man. I'll bitch, tell you what. Bro, it was crazy. Applause, 4th of July in this bitch. It's going to be a lot of gunshots, a lot of fireworks, a lot of fucking hooligan shit going boop, on. Boop, boop. You know how it go around here. Florida, man. Florida get wild for 4th of July, bro. I ain't going to cap. Yeah, bro. My fucking going to chair. the backwoods. Yo, my dog, our chairs are so <laughs> fucked, guys. Like, Yeah, we're going to get some new chairs yeah. pretty fucking soon. Because I know y'all hear my shit squeaking all the time. This nigga be sinking every <laughs> two fucking minutes. It's crazy. Nah, bro. Fourth of July is crazy, huh? I like Fourth of July. I feel man. bad it's for the doggies. Bad. The dogs be scared and shit. Yeah, dogs be, you know, you got to put them up. Yeah, Unless bro. your dog's <laughs> just a fucking trooper, bro. Nah, Remy don't care, bro. Which is nuts. He doesn't like jump or anything like that. Like he's not scared of any fireworks. I'm like, bro, I come back home. I leave him here because I go to grandma's. Fucking come back, bro. This nigga chill, cool in the cage. Not yeah, scared. I'll get scared a little bit. She don't like whine or anything like that or like make it like crazy known. But like you could tell that she's like, what the fuck is going on? For real? Yeah. Oh damn. Fuck yeah. Yeah, that. I mean, be think scary. about it, bro. Just out of nowhere, there's one night. There's fucking nothing but loud bangs going off everywhere. You don't know what the fuck is going on. That's true. That's fucking true. Fourth of July, bro. What the hell? Your birthday is coming up, man. Yeah, man. A little birthday. A little right birthday pod, coming bro. up. You know what I'm saying? Next month. I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I usually don't do a fucking thing, to be completely honest. I'm not a big, like, birthday person. Like, I don't know. I've just never been a big birthday person for myself, but... I don't know. I might go somewhere, get a little Airbnb or something. Uh, somewhere out. in the tropics. Just chill out. You know what I'm saying? Get some drinks. With some coconuts. Some ganja, some coconuts. You know what I'm saying? Had the whole vibes out there. Let's go to Miami. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking about that. that, that, that bro, we did fucking, that shit, bro. Yeah, I was I'm wild. Not trying to go spend the fucking bro, rack. We were wild, bro. I go back in time. I'm like, yo, bro, that was a crazy time, uh, bro. You just live your life, man. We like, had the money at the time. We were like 22. We were like 24. I was like, fuck it. We going to Miami. You were like, yo, let's come out here for my birthday. I was like, fuck it. Got a room. As soon as he told me, went right on on the Airbnb site. Got a room. I was like, all right, we out. We was in the same building and everything, bro. That shit was crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, bro, that was crazy. My uncle came, everybody came. It was a good time. That's a good memory to have. Yeah, to be honest, bro. bro, that's a good memory to have because that was that was probably one of the best birthdays I've had in, nah, a, in a long great. in a long time. Yeah, bro, and that goes right into the first the first topic, man, which is like just because you know somebody for a long time doesn't mean they're your friends. There's people that are like, you know, what I'm saying like your friends will show you they're your friends. They'll show up for you when you need them. You know what I'm saying? Vice versa. It's a two-way street. You know what I'm saying? Like, they'll show up for you. They'll care for you. You know what I'm saying? But there's people that you just known for 10, 15 years. Yeah, you just and, known you them. Know what I mean? And just because you known them and y'all went to school together and this and that. I mean, there's nothing wrong friends. with that. Like, you can just call them an acquaintance. They're, that's exactly what they are, bro. Yeah. They're just acquaintances. And that's, like, that's a word that I don't really use a lot. I'm starting to use them now. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, just, you'd be it's, like, oh, that's my boy. But it's like... He's not your boy. Like, he doesn't think about you the same way you think about him. Like, he him, might be you know a good person. I'm not saying he's not, like... Of course. You know what I'm saying? He's just not your boy. Like, he's not, like, your boy boy that would, like, pick up the phone at 3 in the morning and write out. Fact. Fact. There's, there's different levels to the to the friendship, and, and uh, you got to know the difference, guys. Yeah, and That's you got to know your friends, man. Like, bro, I've had experiences where I try to put certain roles onto friends that didn't... Like, that wasn't them. You know what I mean? And it's like, you got to know your friends, too. Yep. Like, if you know your friend isn't the fighter, you don't call him for a fight. You know what I'm saying? That's true. Or you don't you don't bring them out to a situation where there might be a fight because you know that it's you're on your own. Yeah, because he's you not. Know, you know what I mean? Or like, he's gonna get knocked out. And, yeah, and there's nothing wrong. That doesn't mean that he's a pussy or he's a bad person, bro. Everybody's just not that. Yeah. Everybody's not running around being able to fucking fight people. Defend or whatever. themselves. You know what I'm saying? Like they don't know. Everybody doesn't know what to do when a fight breaks out. Like everybody, like everybody's just different, but you got to know 
you got to know your friends, man, and don't try to put roles on your friends that aren't their role. You know what I mean? Like, or like even calling, like if you call me your best friend, bro, and you don't trust me around your kids and you don't trust me around your wife, then we shouldn't be hanging out. Point I blank. completely agree, bro. Yeah. It should be a hundred percent trust, bro. And it's like, it's so hard, bro. Cause it's like so many people have been fucked over and this and that in their day, whatever. Like it makes yeah. it hard, but it's like, like, I don't know, bro. I feel like it's easier to trust than to not trust. It's easier to leave my house and be like, oh, I trust them than to leave your house and be like, oh, you know what I'm saying? What are they doing? Like, maybe the stress. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, bro, like, and if you feel that way, it usually is for a reason. It usually was a red flag somewhere along the line. And maybe that you, you ignored cut, and yeah. you just let it fester. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, that's another big thing. Like, especially as men, a lot of men have an inkling where they'll see certain things and they're like, oh, that's whole like behavior. That's whole type behavior. You know what I'm saying? And you peep certain things. At that point, it's up to you to continue going that way and, and, and try to wife a girl that you know has these tendencies or not. Yeah. Because if a girl has tendencies, she shows them. Yep. Whether big or small. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So, like, if you ignore the red flags, bro, you then know, it, then it's that's not on the you. other. Yeah, it's not the that's other. Exactly. It's on you. It's not, like, your friend's fault. You know what I mean? Because your friend did nothing to you. Absolutely nothing to you to, to, to deserve that. Because if I have kids, man, like I want my kids to be, I want to, I want them to look at you as an uncle. I want yeah, them to fact. look at you as yeah, a trustworthy like, hey, person. John, Theo John's coming through. If, you some, know what I'm saying? Like, if something happens to me and God forbid I pass away, I want them to come to you mm -hmm. for certain things. You know what I mean? And vice versa. Like I, that's how, that's my type of relationship as a, as a best friend or, Yo, but or a, a best man or you know, somebody that's important to you in your life. Like if you can't have that type of trust with them, don't consider them your best friend. Yeah. Nah, facts. And like especially that. like there's a lot of guys uh, like Lil Dirk said in a song. He's like, I hate when these rappers call these other rappers brothers. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's facts. It's like, yo, everybody's a brother. And, oh, that's my brother. That's my, nah, yeah, don't nigga. call me a brother. You don't give yeah. everybody that that status. Because a brother's a brother, bro. Like, a brother's, like, through good and through bad, nigga. It's like, yo, we up a million dollars or we got to go hide a dead body? Either one. Yeah. Like that's what a brother. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's like ride or die. You know what I mean? And it's like, don't be saying you ride or die. Exactly. Like, you're not my fucking brother, bro. You're not willing to ride out at fucking three in the morning. If my mm -hmm. fucking tire pops and I need you or if I'm getting jumped, are you really going to pull up and help me? Like, you know what I mean? Right. Like, if you, you short $600 and, you know, you're about to get evicted... Like, our, you know, it's not expected, but, you know, that's the yeah, type like of loyalty. Our, would that, you look out? Would like, you? Like, yeah, facts. Like, that's just the type of things that you need to know. And, mm -hmm. like, if you, there's no point of being around somebody if you don't trust them like that. Yeah. I you know what I mean? Like, like, like to a certain extent, you know what I mean? Like, I get it. You can't trust everybody. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can't just trust everybody. Nah, you can't you know? just trust everybody. But everybody. You know what's crazy, man? Like, it's just... Like it's growth. You grow over the years. And that's something that I've been trying to grow on and I've been working on on myself because it's like there was a point in my life where I didn't trust a fucking soul. Like for whatever reason, it might you might have legitimate reasons or not. In my particular case, there were legit reasons, but it was just like you can't treat everybody the same because one person fucked you over. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And I had to learn that. And it's like learning to trust people, bro. It's hard, bro, but it's powerful. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying like I said it's just easier to trust people it's, it's less stress you sleep man. easier at, at night knowing like yo my boy wouldn't steal out my wallet yeah like, shit. you yeah. know like just certain things like you just sleep easier if, if you gotta sit if, here and it fucking feels so much better to fucking say that to be like nah nah he wouldn't do that like when Biggie mm -hmm. says that in that song he's like nah nah love wouldn't show no disrespect and he's like nah not them niggas these yeah. niggas <laughs> you know he's what like, I mean nah, nah. <laughs> Nah, you know what I mean? It's the truth, bro. Like, damn, it feels so much better because, like, stress, bro. And I feel like stress is, like, it could be avoided. I feel like a lot of people become stressed and, and get angry easy. And that's something I had control is, like, yo, like, there was a video that I saw of this guy. He's like, man, like, if you don't like to get angry, then why why do you get angry? It was like a, like a, like a. I don't know. He was like a, a monk or something. I don't know. He was something. He was speaking facts, like trying to speak in a weird way. And I was like, oh, shit, man. That's true. Like, Why do we get mad? We can control it. I don't think you can control getting mad. I think you can control what you do after you get mad. Yeah. That's what he's yeah, probably that's, trying that's, to say. Yeah, like, exactly. It's like getting mad is getting mad. You yeah. can't control that. But yeah. it's like, why would you stay like that? Yeah, like, exactly. You have a choice of like, you know what? 
letting that shit go. It takes more anger to stay mad, bro. Like, I've seen people as, like, they were mad at 10 in the morning, and you talk to them at 6 o'clock at night, and they're still mad. And you're like, damn, it, you it, miserable it, bitch. Like, yeah, nah, it doesn't. Fuck, I can't nigga, be like, mad that long. I'll be mad for, like, maybe bro, an hour, two hours. Bro, yeah, it's like, if you're mad over, like, it, it, it's got to be real serious yeah. for me to be mad for, like, two hours. I'm not even playing. Like, yeah. But... Most of the time, bro, if you're still mad after like five, ten minutes, nigga, then it's something that you need to deal with internally. I for say four eight hours. Just give people four to eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> four to eight? No, 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 no. 48. Oh, 48. The first 48, bro. Damn, before our first 48, your ass. Nah, bitch. Bro. Nah. nah, it's just, I don't know. You you could you can't control getting angry, but you could, you could control the outcome of what the fuck you do afterwards, bro. And that's all it comes down to. Like, just control yourself, man. Like, you can't. You shouldn't act on every emotion and every urge. It's like, that's not good for you. Yeah. I got a question, though. What's that? Yo, you think uh, you think it's the father's job to reach out to the child, or do you think it's the child's job to reach out to the father? I mean, initially, I think it's, it's, it's the father's job to reach out to the kids, for sure. Because I saw it was a meme. It was, like, during, like, Father's Day, too. Mm -hmm. And it was true. It was just like, yo, like... Whose job is it? Whose responsibility is it? Is Listen, it the man, father's job or is it the son's? I feel like it's the it's definitely the father's the father's responsibility, bro. But I feel like sometimes you got like you just got to be the bigger man and be the bigger Honestly, man. Yeah, you just got to be the bigger man and be like, you know what? Let me hit this bitch ass nigga. Yeah, you know what? Because if he you. he does hurl over and fucking die, then I might feel some type of way. Some people, you know what I'm saying? Like, I never used to feel like that. Me either, bro. Me and there was a point in my life where I was just like, you know what, man? Fuck like you, can, you don't even want to talk. And it's just like, all right, I'm going to show you what's up. You know what I mean? But then, like, eventually you grow up, man. Like, you really learn a lot of shit when you start to grow up. For real. Yeah. Facts. You really start to, like, push shit to the side. And you're like, you know what, bro? It's not even worth it. It's not even worth, like, dealing with it. And stressing about it and, and asking why and searching for answers mm -hmm. and answer you never fucking get. It's like once you accept it for what it is, you're like, all right, this is what it is. I learned what can I learn from this situation and what can I what can I what can I take from it and make it into a positive view? And it's true. It's like that's the only thing you could do. For real. Cause it's like you could take that and be like, you know what? I don't want to be like that. You know what I mean? And there's some people that take that trait anyways and become like that. You just got to learn how to, hey, realize like, yo, that's not how you're supposed to be. You know what I mean? I feel like it's as a man, if I have a kid, it's my job, bro. You're my responsibility till you fucking die. Yeah. Or till I die. <laughs> you know what I mean? Whoever goes first. Exactly. But yeah, no, I completely agree, bro. And that's one of the things where it's like having a kid... A lot of people get it in their head that it's like, yo, having a kid is an 18-year thing. When they're 18, bro, get out of my house. And it's like, it sounds, cool, like, funny. It's like, ha-ha, you know, but, nigga, that kid, you're responsible for them for life. If you're 90 and they're 50, you're responsible for them, bro. Yeah, yeah. It's it's like you know what I'm saying? Like, regardless of how old you guys are, like... As a parent, you should want to be responsible for your kid and take care of your children and make sure that they have the best life possible. You know what I'm saying? Like, Yeah, man. Some people just, they're different, bro. Some people are different. And it's like, the older you get, it's like, I feel like it's, it's healthy in a way. You know? It's kind of fucked up to say, but it's kind of healthy because sometimes it kind of just makes you into like a stronger person. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's all you could use it for, man. You I'm got, telling you, bro. Like some yeah. of the some of the strongest, most successful people on this planet just use their their trauma and their pain as a vessel to get them to where they're trying to go. That's all it comes down to, bro. Like everybody goes through shit. People, everybody gets backstabbed. Everybody goes through heartbreak with a loved one. Everybody loses family along the way. Death. You know what I'm saying? Like just everybody goes through certain things. But it's all about perspective and what you decide to act, what you decide to do afterward. The same thing is getting angry. It's like there's people out there that got a call that they just lost their mom or their dad or both at the same time. Some crazy shit. It's like what you decide to do with that pain afterwards is up to you. Yeah, I've seen people yeah. lose both of their parents at the same damn time. God bless. And God bless. Look at me in the eye, have a conversation, and act normal like nothing ever happened. 
And it's like, bro, like, that's a type of strength where it's like, bro. Facts. You know what I'm saying? That's a different type of strength. That's like superhero strength, bro. That's a different type of strength. And it's like, that's superhero strength. God gives his, his, you know, his hardest battles to his strongest soldiers. And that's just facts. Like, there's certain things that you go through and you might be like, damn, bro, why me? Because somebody else might have committed suicide type shit off of it. For real. Like, there's certain things that you go through and you, you, you're sitting there thinking like, damn, bro, like, what the fuck? But it's like, you can handle that. That's why. Yep. The next person can't. The next person can't, bro. Everybody can't walk in each other's shoes. Yep. Like, it's just facts. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's That's people true. out here that there's certain people that I've met that really humbled me, bro, in the sense of like, damn, nigga, I haven't really been through shit. Like, yeah, I've been going to funerals for family since I was a kid, and I've seen, you know, I've seen certain shit, but compared to another person's story, that's like they start telling you like what they really been through, and you're like, what? Like you saw somebody murder your fucking like yeah like your parent in front of you types and you start going through shit and you're like yo I've never had nothing bro. even come close to to that there's yeah. you know what I'm saying and it's like it really humbles you it's like damn there's some people out here bro that are walking around and they look normal bro and you never know that they went through the most craziest traumatic thing in the like on planet earth that you yourself you think about it you're like i don't know if i could could handle that or like forgiving like somebody forgiving somebody for killing their 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 son or something yeah, you ever I've seen, seen moments that and it's like, like and it's court. like i'm yeah. sorry i can't i can't bro i can't bro you're an enemy forever hey, bro life is hard bro and and you know you know me bro i talk a lot of shit about what i would and wouldn't do and this and that but it's all talk bro like you don't really know what the fuck you would do until you're in that situation yeah if yeah. you have a son and he's murdered by somebody bro you might find god or you might find satan bro yeah. <laughs> yeah. real shit like it, it's just like but there's people out there that that's how loving they really are bro where it's like nigga i i, I forgive you and i still love you bro even though you took the only thing for me that i really give a fuck about i still love you and that's real love. Yeah. That's real love. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, in that situation, yeah. bro, it's hard, bro. I don't know. I don't know. Like, you, you can... I don't know, bro. It's hard. It's hard to think about shit like that. I'll tell you what's fucking hard. Let's hear it, Johnny. You know what's going on, man? You heard about this uh, Maxwell sentenced to 20 years in prison? Maxwell sentenced to 20 years in prison. She's going to be fucking big baby lose fucking... Little boy toy in there, bro. No hey cap. Man. Maxwell was convicted in Dece- uh, December of five federal charges. So I mean, come on, man. I don't. I don't know, bro. You're telling me that she she fucking got, bro. I don't know how many kids molested and and sexual assault. Like, like, bro. I mean, I, that thousands. Just shit, we'll say chills, thousands, bro. bro. Who knows? Who there could have been some that died. There could have been some that just got that that died, bro. That really went missing on some shit, like, and she gets twenty years while R. Kelly gets thirty years. And I get it, R. Kelly actually did the actual like touching and shit, so it's a little bit different. But think about how many women went missing and children and and little boys and shit went missing on this island, and all these powerful people touching them, and she's the one that really, really like orchestrated this. And she only gets 20 years. I mean, that just says that money just is powerful. I completely agree. And she knows like a lot of powerful people that are involved in this. I mean, come on, bro. 20 years, bro. It just makes me sad, bro, to know that there's there's men in prison, bro, that are sitting in there for life for drug offenses. For selling shit to people that they want to buy. Regardless of how other people look at it, like, oh, bro, he sold him a kilo of cocaine. Now they're both doing life in prison. It's like, bro, that nigga wanted to sell it and that nigga wanted to buy it. So why is it that people with drug offenses get longer sentences than people that kidnap children and take them to islands and molest them? Because it's like... I don't understand it, bro. This, Like, for real, for real, there's something about... There's like a level of, like, pedophilia. In this country that people want you to get used to. Because yeah. Because that makes no sense to me. A person that does that, bro, electrocute them. It's kind of like it's kind of like people that fuck fucking animals and shit. You know? Yeah, that's crazy. It's I don't like, know about yeah, like, like people. They, <laughs> well, I know about bestiality. Yeah, but I'm bestiality, saying like, yeah, that's crazy. Like, yeah, like they want to make it normal and shit. Like, I yeah. don't know. And it all starts as little by little, bro, as building stones. You know? Like, 
not to sound you know offensive to to certain people, but this is my opinion. It it starts with when you know the gay rights when they wanted to get married that was passed. Then the LGBTQ community now they want to start getting you more used to other things they're trying to make pedophilia an actual thing there's yeah. like a and group shit, i mean like and you know what bro my cousin's like gay i love you group. i love nah, my cousin yeah like I'm, I got, it's nothing it's against, nothing against yeah like but what i'm saying is that they're little by little getting you used to certain things that are taboo considered taboo yeah you know and little by little bro they start programming people to be more acceptive of these things and i really feel like that's <laughs> dangerous bro like I'm telling you, there's groups out here with the with the bestiality thing. It's like if that's what you're into, my G, bro. Hey, bro. God bless. God bless. That's yeah. all I have to say about that. But when it comes down to like, when it comes down to other things, man, it's like they're really pushing the agenda. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like it's it's fucked up and it's dangerous. I feel like it's a lot of demonic shit that's going on too, bro. That has a lot to do with it. You know, it's all devil's work, but it's just people People are greedy, man. And if somebody comes to you and they're like, hey, man, we'll give you $10 million to promote this sub, th- this product that low-key just might produce cancer in people, people will do it. Yeah. They'll be like, fuck it, I'll get a $10 million lick real quick, but that's where your morals and integrity as a person come into play. Yeah, because nah. that's where I really feel like money doesn't buy happiness. I feel like a person that does fucked up things to get that money, they're very miserable when they get it. Because when you get it, now it's even more problems. Now you don't know who to trust, and you're not a trustworthy person. So you you really, you know, what I'm saying, are in your head like I don't know. I just I get a guilty like conscience, bro. Me too. I'm, I'm a type of person that that like feels real bad for doing bad shit. Yeah, exactly. And then when you, you learn, and then bro. you know when you learn from it, you're like, man, like I, you know, some people don't have that. Morals and principles, man. Some people don't have that where it's like, man, like they can't, they can't change. They're just like, yo, like this is what it is. Yeah. And it's like, it's like people that rob and fucking kill people for a living. It's like, they don't have no remorse. They have no, they have nothing. Yeah. The people that have no remorse, uh, you That's know, I, dangerous. I have no remorse for, but there's people out here that are like, like, for example, let's get into it, man. There's this big debate always, always has been about how women are more emotional than men. Right. Yeah, and I'm gonna let you know something, bro. I completely disagree. Men just show their emotion in other ways. They'll fight. Yeah, they'll go punch a hole in a wall. They'll go crash out and shoot some shit up. But it, in all honesty, that's all emotion, mm-hmm. and you're acting on your emotion. You see what I'm saying? So it's just like everybody deals with their emotions differently, bro. And, and and it all comes down to just knowing how to how to control that. Straight yeah, up. yeah. And um, I feel like women they feed off of like emotion too. Like I feel like they they need it. They need that that roller coaster. They need that that the ups and downs to yeah, keep the them excitement. interested. Yeah, you just got to keep them excited, man. Ultimately, like. But that's not just women, bro. That's just everybody. Nobody wants to get bored. Yeah. <laughs> like, who the fuck just wants to get bored, bro? Like, it's just... But that's where, that's like... That's my worst fear, bro. You don't have to be toxic to do that, though. Like, that's where the people get that misconception where it's like, oh, bro, I'm gonna treat her like shit, then treat her good, then treat her like shit, then treat her good. Like, no, nigga. You're just like... That's some psycho shit. Like, yeah. It's like, bro... I do that You sometimes. can keep the excitement going in other ways. Randomly, just random, be like, "Hey, babe, pack your bags. We're going on a trip tonight." Th- oh my god, where are we going? Don't worry about don't it. You'll worry, see when we get there. Yeah, like type just, shit, like yeah. that type of shit. It's like, oh my god, you know like what? It, a lot of guys are not like that, bro. bro it's like there's different, there's different it's levels like, of it's excitement. Like, no, like, you it's don't like, gotta come home and slap a once, bitch. Once they, <laughs> once they get the prize, I've done that. I slapped her. <laughs> I slapped, I slapped him a couple, a couple times, couple you know th- what I mean? She wasn't acting right. Yeah, she wasn't, bro. <laughs> nah, I'm just playing with you, bro. Nah, man, but I'm telling uh, you, man, like, they need a little bit of excitement, though. It's true. And you know what? Is. Like, I feel like it's so important to keep that little spice in the relationship. I know I, I we spoke about this before, but it's super, super crucial. You really can't, like, once you get the prize and the chocolates, don't fucking stop fucking trying to make things spicier. Like you mm-hmm. have to keep them feel like you're still dating. Yeah. You know, that dating scene when you're trying to not impress, but you're trying to just be the best version of you. Mm-hmm. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? 
And I don't know what happens after that, but it just gets thrown out the window after that. It's like, you know what? I already got it. Because people get comfortable. You ever smashed you ever smashed a girl and you're like, Man, I really wanted to hit that and then once you hit it, you're like, Ah, it's whatever. Mm-hmm. It, it happens. happens in relationships. Yeah, it happens. You know, where it's like, oh, I already got it. Like, what, where's she going to go? What is going to happen? Like, oh, wow. Like, you know, now nah, the goal is to me, the goal is to find a wife and be married once for life, like for my whole life. Like, for real, that's always been my thing. Like, I want to have too. one wife me too. for my whole life. But there's a screening process that comes with that, bro. And women don't <laughs> understand. No, that is women don't understand yeah. that when it comes to men that actually don't like we're not looking for financial help or just anything else besides a wife. You know what I'm saying? Like it's different. And there's a screening process when it comes to that, man. And if you're a smart man, you do that. Mm-hmm. Cause you got to look at certain things. It's like, you got to look at how does she get along with her own mom? How does she get along with her siblings? Yeah. Where's her father at? Does she have a relationship with her father? You see what I'm saying? Like there's certain things to me as a man, where it's like, if you come from a broken family structure, it's going to be a lot harder for you to build a family structure. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's healthy and not toxic. Yeah, that's healthy. You know what I mean? Like, It's just some people don't realize what, you know, there's a lot of things from my family that I need to, you know, that I learned that I need to unlearn. And it's like, facts. bro, like you got to understand how to like recognize the problem and be like, yo, I can't be like this with my family mm-hmm. when I start. Facts. You know, you need to unlearn certain things on certain traits. That you picked up from your parents and or whoever in your family that you ra- that you got raised by, mm-hmm. you know, there's not always good things. There's always there's always a bad thing. No, nah, I completely agree, bro. Yeah. And then that's a hundred percent right. I completely agree with that. And then another aspect to it is, bro, parents are getting younger and younger. So you're telling an eighteen year old to act grown just because they pushed out a kid. Yeah. It's like nigga, that's still a kid. It's yeah. a kid having a kid. Yeah. It's a kid having a kid. And that kid doesn't know what the fuck they're doing with their own life, let alone with this baby with them. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? Like getting I feel like that's really part of the problem. Like that's one thing where it's like I've seen the difference, bro. Like, for example, I was raised, you know, I was raised where in a family where my mom was older when she had us, bro. She was in her thirties. You see what I'm saying? So the mentality is already different. A woman in her 30s having children is different than a girl that's 20 having a child. Yep. It just is. You know what I'm saying? So, like, it, I feel like that has a lot to do with it, too. Like, women are just having people, not just women. People are having children at a real young age, bro. And there's a lot of children out here raising children. And it's like, that's, that's, it's a ticking time bomb, bro. Yeah. Something's going to go wrong along the way. Yeah, because you're not equipped. You don't have the life experience yourself. You don't. You're not even through college yet, but you're you're gonna teach a kid how to get through college, nigga. You haven't done it yet. You see what yeah. I'm saying? Like you haven't done half the shit that you're gonna try to teach this kid about. Nah, and it's like people forget that like we still have time too. That like, like <laughs> of you course, know what I mean? like, like everybody like, it's like wants man, to it's, have a kid it's at mandatory, twenty. Yeah, right? it's like, like everything is mandatory. Bro, now. in like, our culture, especially like yo, uh, yo, in our culture, oh, like Boricuas is like yo. If you Spanish. don't have three kids by twenty one, there's something wrong with you. Yeah, like, if like you, yo, yeah. his dick don't work or something. Like something. Like they start talking mad shit, and it's like yo, bro, maybe I just don't want to fuck up my life at eighteen and have to fucking drive a forklift till I'm fifty. Maybe I don't want to do that. You see what I'm saying? Like, maybe I want to set myself up first and have a house and have a structure set up so that if anything happens, I'm good. And my kid's good. And my wife is good. You yeah, see what I'm man. saying? Like, and you have time, bro. Like, everybody doesn't have to be on the same type of time, bro. Like, there's people like Adam22. Shout out to him, bro. That motherfucker had his first kid at 35. And I want that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that's what I want. I want to establish myself. He's good now. His podcast is moving. He's making millions of dollars. Now, let me have a fucking kid. So I can actually focus on being a dad and my wife could focus on being a mom and we don't have to be out here working all day and having the school take care of the kid. Yep. And raise my kid. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it all depends on what you want out of life, man. Straight the fuck up. Yeah. Everyone's fucking different. So everyone's do, different. Man. Do you guys. Do we you. love you. We but appreciate I'll tell you, you what. Tell them, Johnny. Yo, we out of here. We love you. We appreciate you. We're done with the 70s. We're listen, trying to get man. into the 80s now. Hey, that's how it goes. <laughs> Yo. All right. But listen, man, we appreciate every single last one of you. Go over on Patreon. Check us out over there. And last but not least, tell somebody you love them. Peace and love. Peace and love. Peace and love.